The Framingham Parks Recreation and Cultural Affairs Department held a meeting with neighbors to discuss improvements to Mary Denison Park. Back in 2014, the park was closed for a time when it was found to be contaminated with lead and other chemicals. In the early 1900s, Denison Manufacturing Company used it as a dumping site, as did the town. It transitioned to a park in 1960, basically just covering over the garbage with loam and dirt. Area residents came out to see the proposed designs and listen to the challenges of the site and its usage. Area advocate and city councilor Judy Grove, park and recreation director Jim Schneider, along with design consultant Sherry Ruane, talked about possibilities for utilizing all corners of the park. Citizens raised some concerns, but most left with a sense of excitement for the plans they hope to take into action in the not too distant future. And that is that vehicular... What we did at the 2016 meeting was have several boards with a couple of different layouts and, and ideas with lots of different kind of programming ideas. And people physically, you know, wrote on post-its and we put them kind of around things they liked, things they'd like to see changed and things like that. So um, that's how we sort of narrowed it down. I think we're at a place right now where we need to kind of focus, uh, you know, kind of with one design, but then how do we tweak that design to best suit uh, the needs for everybody involved? We've got a long runway on this, given the, you know, chemical mitigation. So we do have a luxury of time. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see us be able to, you know, kind of take the show on the road mm -hmm. to the areas where we can, can get the, the most active input from the folks who are most active, the ones who are out, outside, you know, playing on a crummy, you know, yeah. playground that over an interfaith that we're trying to get uh, donated and rebuilt. When I think about Mary Denison Park and all that needs to happen here, particularly here in South Framingham, that is something that I look at as a, as a legacy for this community. And I think as a legacy for this community, our children need to have a place to play safely. Families need to have a place where they can have enjoyment. And Mary Denison Park is that place. So as you know, the site itself is currently um, active recreation. There are some areas that are used for, there's parking along the street and a small parking area in the back and then softball fields and some rectangular field use, the basketball courts and the small tot lot. And then also the brook that runs alongside the park, which is an important element to this. And so as we looked at the park and took feedback from folks and also looked at the permitting, that has been done for the past several years to understand who used the park currently and then how that can be evolved as the community evolves. So to walk you through the plan, um, we have pulled all of the recreation, courts, playground, splash pad, picnic area, gathering space, shade gazebo, um, to the front of the site. And the reason we did this is because there was a, a very high level of concern about safety. And so visual access into the site, into these really critical site features was very important. So this whole zone really functions as neighborhood park. Um, we did reallocate parking. And the reason that we've done this is because for the use of these fields, when there are many games going on at the same time or a tournament, turns out that there's a lot of cars that end up coming through the space. And so in this particular scheme, we took a look at what it would mean to park those cars on the park property. This also happens to dovetail with the remediation strategy where this is one of the more contaminated areas of the park and asphalt acts as a cap. And so this is done consciously to be efficient in how we manage the remediation and also to create a system that maximizes potential programming with those existing conditions. And then we've created a central um, pathway that moves right through the center of the park and along that there's a picnic plaza, so if camps are meeting there, people can have events there. If there's a tournament taking place, this is where operations can happen. Um, the two softball fields have been put towards the back of the site. And one of the reasons that we've done this is that the lighting of those fields provides an inherent park security feature so that at night the back of the park is lit and it's used Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays throughout the evening and then typically all day Saturdays during softball season. So it's, they're pretty busy places. When they're not in use um, for softball, 
the beauty of these zones is that they're open fields. You can actually fit a rectangular field in the outfield if you want to. They can be used for playing frisbee. They can be used for more informal play. There is a proposed multi-use rectangular field in this location of the park. And the intention here is that this handles all the sports that are not baseball, softball. So here's an example where you could have flag football, soccer, lacrosse, those sports can be played on this field. It is proposed to be synthetic turf. That allows the seasons to be extended. It allows there to be much more use of these very precious resources. And it does not limit play during rain. Around the exterior of the property is a walking path. And this we heard over and over again at the community meeting that this was an important piece of the programming. And it's very well used. So while kids might be practicing soccer on the field, parents are walking the loop. Um, we also have included a sand volleyball court in this back corner, um, which allows there to be seasonal play. And then throughout the walking path, there are seating nodes, there's a workout, there's some workout equipment for folks that want to run and do some exercises um, around the outside. And then we took a very hard look at what's happening along the stream bank, and it needs to be cleaned up, obviously. Um, it's definitely been um, kind of marginalized over the years, so the intention is to clean up the trash widen it in some areas to reduce flooding, and also create a walking path right along the edge. We'd also incorporate rain gardens into this design so that the site runoff and the stormwater management can be filtered through these rain gardens before it enters the stream. This will help improve water quality and will reduce erosion and siltation. So as we work through the design, um, and please know that this is a master plan, meaning that not every bench has been selected and light has been placed, but the intention is to get these ideas out so that we can hear from you and give you something to react to. So this is all a part of an ongoing dialogue and we're really excited to hear from you folks to understand where things could be adjusted in order to really meet the needs of Framingham.